Commuter Cars Corporation has designed and built a car that is, to our belief, the only car that can legally lane split because it's actually narrower than many motorcycles that can legally split lanes. So in LA traffic, it really is a great asset to have a narrow car like this. Also, it parks much easier and it runs on about a penny a mile. The idea um, started because of being stuck in a traffic jam, looking around me in Los Angeles and finding only one person in all of those cars. We wound up building this first uh, car prototype, something we threw together in a couple of months, worked just beautifully, better than we expected, and we just kept developing it. When we had a transmission and a differential and a motor, it took up too much room in the car. There was a a dragster that used these two nine-inch motors and a Zilla controller. It was kind of exciting to think that I could pack these into just the space between the two rear wheels, and it gives us an incredible thousand foot-pounds of torque, zero to 60 in four seconds, and a, and a quarter mile in 12. And because of the big battery case, there's 2,000 pounds under the floor of the car, and so it slides around an autocross course just like a sports car, despite its looks. The car started out as, as just kind of tinkered together in a garage, a wonderful solution and just a really neat concept and uh, it, it went from 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 kind of the the, the inventors um, structure into a more of a production car but in in the process they introduced a lot of kind of unnecessary trickery and and some fairly hard stuff to make and so I've been going after that stuff and trying to to take things that are difficult to make and turn them into easy to manufacture things. The drawings were pen and ink originally from a fairly famous suspension engineer, Herb Adams. But then these were converted to SolidWorks drawings so that we could manufacture them. And now, since we have Dave Mounts with us, we have many, many new designs, new steering rack, a new gear train. The whole, the whole thing has been redesigned with SolidWorks now, and it's just, a, it's just beautiful what it's done for us uh, as far as getting a, a much more manufacturable car and taking care of a lot of the problems that we had with earlier versions of it. When you get into something as complicated as a double A-arm suspension with steering racks and sway bars and this kind of stuff, even, even the best 2D stuff, it's very hard to anticipate where all the collisions could occur. And uh, the software has been wonderful about you know, letting us actually stroke the suspension and watch stuff and, and make sure that nothing's hitting. And if a dimension's in the wrong place, you can just pull it and drag it and move it over. And uh, Just the, the, the placement of dimensions and the ability to take the part and kind of slide it around on the paper it's, it's so easy compared to the 2D stuff I've used to. I've used three different 2D packages pretty extensively and, and it just, it's so much easier. I bet a drawing is honestly 25% of the time that it used to take me to, uh, to do it. So SolidWorks has helped me a lot with learning how to make sheet metal stuff and unfold it and, and be able to give patterns right to the sheet metal guys. And uh, so I started kind of messing around with that stuff and all of a sudden the sheet metal guys we were working with were like going, this is great, we can take your stuff and just just uh, make parts out of it. I send them a DXF and uh, out of SolidWorks and uh, they laser it and bend it and next time we see it, it's all put together and it's beautiful. And George Clooney sent a check in the mail one day and uh, then a couple months later followed up and wondered where his car was and we told him we're busy building it and we were and uh, we did complete it and we delivered it to him about a year and a half ago and it serves him very well. He drives it fairly regularly to work. Our next target is to try to hit about 10,000 cars per year. That would be considered low volume production. We feel that we could reach a price point of under $20,000. In the end, there will be lanes that are split in half and those cars can go 70 miles an hour unobstructed and the other lanes will be going slowly. And I think this is the future. And when that happens, there will be a mass exodus from regular cars from commuting to these cars. I believe that there will be 150 million of these cars on the roads of the world uh, within 30 years and hopefully within 15.